classifying figures on a coordinate grid. So because it's a coordinate grid, that means that you're going to be given coordinates. Surprise, surprise. We're going to be dealing with triangles and quadrilaterals. And this lesson will match up with 2.4 of the grade 10 Nelson textbook, if you're following that one. There's a lot of material here, so we're going to try to make sure that you've got all the key concepts figured out. So first of all, if you want to classify a triangle, the first thing you need to know is find the side lengths of each side. Now, why are you doing that? Because when all the side lengths are the same, and that would be over here, what happens when all side lengths are the same? What kind of triangle do you have? All sides same. And of course you would say that gives me an equilateral triangle. Some properties of an equilateral triangle. All the sides are equal. All the angles are equal. So you don't have to worry about finding the angles because you're going to classify it by shape. Okay, so you're on a coordinate grid, you've drawn it, you measure each of the side lengths, and you find out they're all the same. So you would say, I have an equilateral triangle. Now, if you find the side lengths and you find that only two are the same, two the same, I think you would know then that you would have an isosceles triangle. I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S. -E -E isosceles. <clears throat> and an isosceles triangle can either be like this, where you have two equal sides and two angles the same here. Or you can have a right isosceles triangle that has a right angle here. Okay, so let's worry about how we find those later. Let's just go back again to the side lengths. So if you do the side lengths and they're all different, and do you know what that one's called? You can probably guess while I'm writing all different here. And it is called a scalene triangle. Scalene. Scalene triangle. And they look like this, right? All different side lengths. So you can have just a scalene where all the um, all the the angles are different. Um, well, they're all different in each of these, but what I'm trying to say is that you don't have a right, a right scalene. So this would be what you would call a right scalene. In other words, it has a right angle in it. So you might be asked to prove that it is a right scalene triangle and, or a right isosceles. So using your um, slopes now, now you're going to need slopes, slopes here to determine whether or not you have a right isosceles or a right scalene. And remember how to figure out if they have a right angle. What is the, what is the key to finding a right angle? So you would have to show, show that the slopes are negative reciprocals, negative reciprocals. Now, what's the other option, though? Sometimes if you have it written on a coordinate plane like these ones here, what is going to happen with the slopes? So you could also have, or you could have zero slope. One is zero slope and the other slope is undefined or zero slope and undefined. And you understand why, right? Because it's going straight up. So this would be zero slope and undefined. And if I drew that right scaling triangle was on a coordinate plane and it went this way with the right angle here, so if it was something like that, then these would give you negative reciprocals for this one, right? This one and this one. Okay, so that's what you do to find the types of triangles. Pretty simple. Equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. Equilateral, you don't worry about the slopes. But isosceles or scalene, you have to check the slopes to see if you have a right, a right, uh, I didn't write that one down here. This is a right isosceles triangle or a right scalene. 
I saw some yeast. Okay, so that's our triangles. Pretty basic. You only have three types. You've seen them before and you know what to do. Okay, so the second option is quadrilaterals. So quadrilaterals, four sides, quad, quadruplets, quad, what else do you do? Quads. Four sides, four vertices, and the tier angles all add up to 360 degrees. Now there's something else that's just a little bit interesting about quadrilaterals, and that is that if you find the midpoints of any side, any quadrilateral, so let's say the midpoint, I'm just going to estimate, so let's say the midpoint's about here, the midpoint of this line is maybe here, this one is about here, and this one is about here. And if you join these um, midpoints, you will always get a parallelogram. So this one and this one, if I pick the right points here, it will look really nice. So you can try that. You can draw, draw a bunch of different quadrilaterals and say, oh, yep, it always works. So these will always be parallel, and these ones will be parallel if you join the midpoints. So we'll write midpoints here for you. It's kind of an interesting property. Okay, so when we're looking at um, quadrilaterals, the first thing we have here is what we call parallelograms. And you know what a parallelogram is? Let's see, it's a big word. Parallelogram. Parallelogram. So a parallelogram is just a four-sided quadrilateral where the opposite sides are equal and parallel. Now it doesn't have to be a rectangle. It could be like this, right? It could draw it like this. That's a parallelogram. But if the um, angles are right angles, then you have, ta -da, ta da I'm sure you know, it's called a rectangle. So a rectangle, so just think about the properties of rectangles. They have right angles in all four corners. The sides are parallel and the side, opposite sides are equal. So opposite sides, opposite sides equal. Um, opposite sides parallel, parallel, and in the parallelogram as well, these sides have to be equal if these are parallel as well. The difference being that this one has right angles in it. Now the second one is one that teachers like to put on tests because students don't go to the extent of trying to figure out the difference between these two shapes. Now this one is called a rhombus and I like to think of it sort of like a square that you pushed over and you just push it down. So the side lengths are all the same length, side lengths are all the same length and the same thing with something that's more familiar to you which is the square, a square, all the side lengths are equal but it's quite obvious that there is a major difference here. Right? We do have parallel sides. This side is parallel to this one. This side is parallel to this one. And likewise on the rhombus. So the rhombus and the square have a lot of similar characteristics. The only thing that's separating them is the right angles. So if you were asked to show the difference between a rhombus and a square, you would have to prove that um, the sides were negative reciprocals of one another in one of your um, things that you're trying to identify, right? It has to be a square, has to have the right angles. Now, in addition to all these lovely shapes, there are several others that you might have seen in your textbook. There is the irregular quadrilateral. Let's see if we can, didn't really, these, these ones, you should know about, but you're not going to be asked to prove these. It's not usually part of any homework questions I've ever seen. Um, irregular quadrilateral, and that would be something like eh, this one, 
this one, this one. So you don't have parallel. So, well, these could be parallel, but let's try to draw it so they're not. Um, all the side lengths are different lengths. You could have um, a trapezoid. I know you looked at that in grade nine as well. Trapezoid. So you have something like um, this, 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 and this. This would be your trapezoid where you have two parallel sides and um, different side lengths here. Um, you have an isosceles. Isosceles. Get used to spelling that word. I saw isosceles trapezoid. So a trapezoid, but isosceles. So isosceles means it's going to have the same angles. So you have two side lengths that are the same like this. And you have, so this side and this side are going to be the same. And you're going to have these angles the same. And these sides parallel. And the last one is called a kite. Now a kite is similar to a rhombus. Rhombus is really what they call a diamond shape. So because it's exactly all the same side lengths, a kite looks more like, well, you know what a kite looks like, like this, right? You draw them for your trigonometry lessons. So you have two sides the same here. These angles are the same. And these sides here are the same length. So these bottom ones here are not usually ones you're asked to prove in uh, classifying but good to know that they exist. Okay, let's go on to something that I think will help you when you're trying to do your homework, and that is understanding what to do. So what would you do? This is the question to you. What would you do? And you can stop and think about it, and then I'll write the answer if that's going to help you. Maybe when you're reviewing for your test, you might want to come back and think about these things. What do you do to show two line segments are parallel given the end points? So you have to be given end points of something, you know, two, three, and seven, nine coordinates. So to prove that these two line segments are parallel, of course, you'd be given four points, right? Because two end points for each line. So to prove that they're parallel, you have to show the slopes are the same slopes are the same. What would you do to show that two line segments are perpendicular? Well, then you would, you still have to find the slopes. So find slopes and show that they are negative reciprocals. Show they are negative reciprocals. I forgot the I. Trying to write fast and talk at the same time is hard to do. Okay, how do we show a triangle is isosceles, scalene, or equilateral? Well, that goes back to what we started with, right? It's all about the sides. Just trying to grab the sheet. So to show that it's isosceles, scalene, or equilateral, I have to show that the side lengths are all the same. The isosceles triangle has two the same, and scaling has all different. And what do you use? So you need to use the length of a line segment. So you're going to use L equals, and do you remember how to draw this one? Remember the happy face guy? Okay, so you need a nose. You need some eyes. You need some eyebrows. You need a happy face y2 minus y1 plus x2 minus x1. So you're going to show, you're going to show that it's isosceles by finding the lengths of all, you're going to find the lengths of all the side, the line segments. Find lengths of all sides. And then you're going to say, oh, well, these, I've got two the same number, so that means it's isosceles. Or, all three side lengths are the same, then it's equilateral, or all three side lengths are different, and so it's scaling. Now, the other thing you might want to do, and this is a good idea, even if it's not asked, put on a coordinate plane, okay? Put your points on and join them, draw it. And then 
because sometimes you might make a mistake in here with your length of a line segment. So if you put something onto a coordinate plane like this, and let's say you had uh, two like this, and you saw that these two were the exact same length, by, by looking at it, they look like these two are going to be the same. Actually, they almost look like all three are the same. But you might want to go back and see, maybe I made a mistake with one of those because these two really look like they're the same length. So double check. Okay, so that's pretty easy. You find the side lengths and you show what type you have. How do you find the difference between a square and a rhombus? Okay, so we talked about squares and rhombuses and how a square has... They, if you find the side lengths, you're going to say, oh, it's a square. But no, you have to... So first you want to find the lengths because it doesn't help that you just know the lengths because a length, if they're all the same, then you know for sure that it's either a square or a rhombus. But to distinguish between a square and a rhombus, you need to check the slopes. Right? You need to check the slopes. And I don't know how many students make a mistake on my unit test. And I always put in something about squares and a rhombus and they don't get it. Okay, so make sure if it's negative reciprocals, it's going to be a square. So negative reciprocals. then it's going to be a square. And if it's a rhombus, you'd have something like um, two of them have this slope and two of them have this slope, right? Two with one slope, the same. Well, you know what I mean, same slopes. And two with different, but same slopes. Different from this one. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. So it would be like example, maybe I'll give you an example. One slope was minus one quarter. Um, another slope was minus one quarter. Another slope was um, three over two. And another one was three over two. So you find the slopes between all the different pairs in your square. And you get two that are same, two that are different. They're not negative reciprocals of one another. Even though one's negative, one's positive, they don't multiply to negative one, right? You can't make a negative one out of them. So that would mean this would be a rhombus. And if they're negative reciprocals, and again, a negative reciprocal would be like two thirds and minus three halves, right? When you multiply them together, you get negative one minus six over six. Okay, and finally, how do you verify, given the vertices of a triangle, that it is a right isosceles triangle? Okay, so right away, you want to think triangles, isosceles. R Never mind about the right part. Right just means right angle. There's a right angle in it. But an isosceles triangle means two sides have to be the same. So step one would be to find... and. For all the triangles, you're pretty much doing this all the time, right? Find side lengths. So you're going to do L equals this three times. It's kind of tedious, but you have to get through it. Okay, so you're going to find the side lengths. So now that two are the same, two have to be the same because you're going to say verify that this is a right isosceles. Well, verify that it is means it is, right? If they say, is this a right isosceles? isosceles triangle, then maybe it's not. Maybe your answer will be no. So find the side lengths, first step. And second of all, see, uh, find slopes. Find the slopes between all pairs. Between all pairs of coordinates. So it's best if you put these things on a coordinate plane because if you have, let's say we're going to make a right isosceles triangle. So it's going to go down like this. It's going to be one point. And there's going to be one out here. And one here. Okay, so this is going to be um, 
a right isosceles. So two side lengths the same and one, is that even going to work? Like this, right? Right isosceles. So you have to prove that this one, this, I didn't draw it right. It's not going to, it's not going to look like that. At the right angles here, this side length has to be the same length. So it's going to be more like this, right? This one, this one, forget this line. So this line and this line have to be equal and you have to have a right angle in here. So you're going to prove that this slope of this line and the slope of this line are negative reciprocals of one another. Okay, so that's kind of what you need to do too. And, and this pretty much covers, whoops, sorry. This pretty much covers everything that was asked in the homework assignment for this 2.4. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a problem with you. And you're given three vertices. You're asked to determine the fourth. And are the di diagonals the same length and prove it? Okay, so the first thing you want to do is plot your points on the coordinate plane here. So make a nice plane. Put arrows, X and Y, label it. Make sure you always put on a scale. Teachers go crazy when you don't do that. Okay, so 4 and 12. Maybe you want to drive your teacher crazy. Not a good idea. Okay, 4, 12. There's P. Q is 9 and 14. X is 9, so this is 10, 9 and 14. And 12, 14. It's going to be about here. It's going to be Q, 9, 14. 14 and R 13 and 4. 12, 14, 13, 2, 4. So this is going to be R. That's going to be 13, 4. Okay, so I'm asked to find the fourth. I'm going to find which side is the bumpy side. I'm going to join these together, the ones that I have. And I want to find the fourth, they must have told you in this question that it was a parallelogram as well. Okay, so I want to find this fourth coordinate. Where is this? How would you go about doing that? And that's the tricky part. So we're at 9 here and 14, and we went over 5. So this is, this is the thinking you should be doing. Just like we did when we had... Um, the midpoint and an endpoint, find the other endpoint. Remember that lesson? Okay, so if I go this way, I went over five, and I go down, how far? So I go from 14 to 12. So I go down from 14 to 12, so down two. So I go left five, down two. So from here, I'm going to go left five. That brings me to here, and down 2 brings me to here. So I go left 5, and I go down 2, just like I did from this point. And that's going to take me to this point here, which is 8, 2. So that's my coordinate of S. And then you could finish drawing your quadrilateral there just like that okay so that's much easier than trying to do something algebraically just logically think I went over five and I went down two to get to this point so I have to be the same distance from this point to this point okay so s is five two the second part says are the diagonals the same length prove it the diagonals you know what a diagonal is diagonals from one corner to the other Right, so diagonals are going this way. Do, 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 do. Are these diagonals going to be the same length? Okay, so I want to know what are the diagonals. Diagonals are, diagonals are P, R, P to R, and Q to S. Are they the same length? Dig out from your brain your length of a line segment formula. 
So I'm just going to put the brackets in like this, and I'm going to fill in the blanks. And I'm going to do the same thing for the length of QS. Okay, this minus this squared plus this minus this one squared. So the length from um, PR, so that's going to be 12 minus 4 squared plus 4 minus 13 squared. Okay, where did I get those numbers? So I did 12 minus 4, that's a change in the y's, 12 minus 4, and 4 minus 13. So 12 minus 4, that's going to be 8 squared, and 4 minus 13 is going to be minus 9 squared. Remember that when you square anything, it's going to be positive. So that's going to give me the square root of 64 plus 81. And that's going to be the square root of 145. Okay, so I have to do the same thing for QS now. I'm going to do 14 minus 2 plus 9 minus 8. That's going to give me the square root of 12 squared is 140. Well, I'll write it here. 12 squared plus 1 squared. That's going to be square root of 144 plus 1 and look at that it's the very same 145 square root 145 so these lengths are exactly the same so the diagonals therefore the diagonals are the same length so that's the kind of work you're going to do um, I didn't do a lot of word problems with you because I think it's more just knowing, understanding what you have to do. And I think the uh, what would you do to find certain things is much more important to you than writing out the length of a line segment five times. Right. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. Diagonals are the same length. I must admit, analytic geometry is a bit of a pain. A pain in that there's lots of proofs to do, lots of um, equations to use over and over and over, but um, it's just one of the sections in grade 10. Quadratics is so much more fun. Okay, so that's the end of 2.4. We have just a couple more lessons to do to complete um, analytic geometry. I hope you're all safe and well, and um, please keep watching if you're in grade 10. Don't forget to come back for grade 11 functions, grade 12 advanced functions, and grade 12 calculus and vectors. I have people all over the world watching my lessons now. It's very encouraging, and I hope you'll stick with it. All the best. Bye.